All right, welcome to our last video in the measurement series, which is volume. So we're specifically going to cover volume of a prism, but let's start off with what is volume. Volume is the number of cubes that I can fit in a 3D shape. So if we look at the volume of this shape over here, uh, that would be, we just, this is, okay, this is one centimeter here, which make, makes this shape a centimeter cubed. So I have one, two, three centimeter cubed here, four centimeters cubed here. So that's three times four centimeters cubed, which is 12 centimeters cubed. And you could also just count them as well. Now the volume of this rectangular prism, uh, if you didn't know there's a rectangular prism, we'll get into what that means. But um, I have one of, I have really three of these stacked on top of each other. So if this is 12 centimeters cubed, that must be 12 times three, because there's one, two, three stacked on top of each other. We're going to find out later that every, uh, every prism has a base and a height. So this would be the height and this would be the, this shape over here would be the base. And the volume is the area of the base times by the height, just like the volume of this one is, uh, 12 is the volume of this times by three because it's three tall. All right, so what is volume? The number of cubes I can fit into something. What is a prism? Now I'm gonna to go to another program to hopefully show you what exactly a prism is. Also talk about these terms, base, height, and cross section. Okay. So a prism basically happens when you've got a shape and you stretch that shape out, uh, sorry, a two-dimensional shape, you stretch it out to make a 3D shape. So I found a program that can help us with that. It doesn't matter what the program is, but here I've got three shapes and I'm stretching them out to make three-dimensional shapes. And so, We had, we had three uh, bases. These are all bases. So I've got a rectangle base, a triangle base, and a weird pentagon base. And those bases are the ones that we stretch out. Now, we, you also need to know what a cross section is. And a cross section is like when you cut one of these shapes, uh, now let me show you how that will be looking. So I can cut these shapes to show you what's inside of them. And you notice that everywhere I'm cutting this shape, uh, this pink, is that pink? I'm kind of colorblind. Uh, yeah, the pink shape is still the same shape all the way through. So this is called the cross section and the cross section uh, is always the same as the base. So we've got a base and you've got a cross section that's the same all the way through. So hopefully you know what a prism is. It's, it's a 2D shape that's stretched out and hopefully you know what the base, the height and the cross section are. Uh, just to revise, there's a base and the height and the cross section is the same shape as the base. Okay, so quick example. Let's say I'm walking down the supermarket aisle and I see this drink bottle and I think this is a fantastic looking drink bottle. I'm going to find the volume of it. So I get a ruler from my pocket and I start measuring it up. Now you've probably got a few questions at this stage. Uh, why does he have a ruler in his pocket? What's the meaning of life? Uh, why is he finding the volume? Now, I'll answer the last question. The reason I would want to find the volume of this drink bottle is because I want to find out how much, I want to make sure I'm drinking the right amount of water. And 
since one centimeter cubed is equal to one milliliter, if I find the volume, I can find the capacity, how much water I'm drinking, if I drink everything in the drink puddle. So, uh, let's say we assume that this drink bottle is like a cylinder, which is a type of prism. A cylinder, I guess you could say, is a circular prism because I've got a circle at the base and that's stretched out to make a prism. So, let's say I measure that the height of this cylinder is 30 centimeters and the radius of the base is four centimeters. So to find the volume of any prism, you do the, you, you find the base times the height. So the, the, the area of the base, to find that I needed to use my circle area formula, pi r squared, and then I'm timesing that by the height. Okay, and when we substitute numbers in here, we find that uh, r is 4 centimeters, so we've got pi times 4 squared, we're timesing that by 30. Okay, now let's use a calculator to work that out, because we need uh, pi from the calculator. So, whereas pi times 4 squared, what was it, times 30. So it's 150, roughly 1508 centimeters cubed. So roughly 1,508 centimeters cubed. And now that's, that means it's that many milliliters as well. So that's basically equal to around 1.5 liters. So quite a big drink, big drink bottle. All right. So I did another take for this video and that didn't work. So let's try again. Um, this is a question. We have to do one more example because uh, people get very confused about this example. Now, if you've seen all that you need to see for now, go away, do some questions, uh, try and work out the volume of some prisms. And you might find that you find you see a triangular prism and you get very confused when trying to work it out. So if that's the case, come back to the video and watch this section. All right. So the first thing people get confused about here is thinking about what is the base. Now, some people think that the base must always be on the bottom. So they think this rectangle over here is the base. But remember, the base is the shape that is stretched out um, to make the prism. And the rectangle, that's not the rectangle, that's the triangle. The triangle's been stretched out to make the prism. So the base is this one. Okay, so let's start. Volume equals base times height. But that's not even the start of the confusion. People get confused, and this is fair enough, they get confused about the base and height of the triangle and the base and height of the prism. So the base of the triangle is here. That's five centimeters. We'll, we'll use a lowercase b for that. The base of the prism is the area of this triangle. So let's work that out. The area of the triangle is half times base, meaning this one, times the height, meaning the height of the triangle. So that's a half times five times four, uh, which is 10. If you don't, if you didn't know that, you can do it in a calculator, I don't mind. Not the point. So this is the area of the triangle, which is the base of the prism. So that is 10. And sorry, this is five centimeters. This is 10 centimeters squared because it's an area. Uh, and the next thing people get confused about is the heights. 
the height of the triangle, as we've said, is 4. The height of the prism is 9. It's how far the triangle has been stretched out. So that's 9. Hmm. I have written centimeters when I should have written meters. Easily fixed. Sorry about that. Uh, 4 meters, 9 meters. Okay. Now, finally, let's uh, put everything into our equation. So now that we are clear that this capital B is the base of the prism, and that's 10, and the capital H that we're using for volume is the height of the prism, that's 9, we can finally work out the volume of the prism, which is 90 meters cubed. Thanks for watching.